Hey guys, it's Jasmine. I'm back with another video today. This one is going to be on Marilyn Monroe, but it's not going to be your typical one where I just talk about her life and all of her success stories and everything. It's actually going to be more based around her potential father, suspected father, whatever you want to call him. Um, this one I find really interesting because I always like to know kind of the backstory of a lot of things. And on top of that, her dad ended up buying land in him in California. Of course, it's always about him in California, right? So he ended up buying land there. And I just thought it was interesting because I used to hear my neighbor, Betty, talk about um, different Marilyn Monroe stories and her dad. You would hear other older people, you know, where my grandma used to work at. It's called, it used to be called Mr. T's Restaurant. Um, you would hear the old folks kind of talking about Marilyn Monroe this and Marilyn Monroe that. So I kind of I think it's kind of interesting that a town as small as him in California kind of has a Marilyn Monroe um, story. And I also kind of want to bring some positivity to him. I know I, I talk crap about him a lot in my videos because it's really shot to shit at this point. I'm not even going to lie. Like, it's bad. It's heroin. It's meth. It's just it's not it's not good you know any of the older buildings are shut down so like I wanted to kind of talk about something a little bit more positive so let's go ahead and get started so Charles Stanley Gifford was born September 18th 1898 to Frederick Gifford and Elizabeth Easton there really is no record of his early childhood or anything up to the point of where he went to Hollywood. So I don't really have a lot of information on that, but I can tell you that he ended up marrying a woman named Lillian Preister in July, on July 26th, 1919. They were together for four years, but she eventually left him in October of 1923. And then they finally divorced in May of 1925. At that time he was working as a hyper shooter and a developer at Consolidated Films in Hollywood, California. Now the reason for their divorce was essentially because Gifford was a bit of a man whore. I don't really know a nice way to say it, but these are some quotes. He associated with women of low character. He was addicted to narcotics and boasted about being with women and his female conquests. So to me, that kind of sounds like a bit of a, a man whore. Now one of those conquests was Gladys Baker and she worked as a negative film cutter at the same company. Although her name was Gladys Baker, she was born Gladys Pearl Monroe, born May 27th, 1902, to Otis Elmer Monroe and Della May Hogan. Now, Gladys had a rough childhood. Um, her dad ended up getting put into a mental asylum at some point when she, I'm thinking between five and six. There's no actual records, but that would be my assumption. And he ended up dying in the mental asylum due to syphilis of the brain. Um, just real quick, if you have syphilis and you don't take care of it, it'll eventually go to your brain. So because her mom didn't have syphilis, one would assume that he may have been a bit of a man or too. He ended up dying when she was seven years old from syphilis of the brain. Due to the fact that he was in the mental asylum and that he died from a mental illness, Gladys always had a fear that she was gonna be crazy as well. So in 1916, Gladys fell for a man named Jasper Baker. He was 12 years older than her and in a few months of them getting together she ended up getting pregnant. Now her mom being widowed and having other children wanted the best for her daughter and so she lied on court paperwork saying that she was 18 even though she was just a few days shy of her 15th birthday. On January 16th, 1918, Gladys married Jasper. Robert Jackie Baker came into this world on January on January 16th 1918 and then she had another son Kermit Baker in 1919 so she was pretty much pregnant back to back they eventually divorced and this is when she met Edward Mortensen she married him on October 11th 1924 they then separated on May 26th 1925 and then they divorced three months later on August 15th, 1928. Now this is where we kind of get back to her working in the film studio as a negative film cutter and um, where she met Stanley Gifford. 
and you know they had their little rendezvous and then on Christmas of 1925 Gladys told Charles that she was pregnant and he deserted her just up and left now even though it's safe to assume that Gifford was the father of Marilyn Monroe um, Edward was put on the birth certificate because she didn't want because Gladys didn't want Norma Jean to be considered illegitimate so she just put her first husband's name on the birth certificate. Marilyn Monroe was born on June 1st 1925 and I really like that birthday because it's my birthday June 1st so I really kind of I get a little conceited about that. I'll tell anybody and everybody that I was born on the same day as Marilyn Monroe. It makes me feel special. The reason that we think Marilyn is definitely Giffords and not Mortensen is because the time of conception was 10 days after their divorce and, and she was pregnant three and a half months after separation. And one would assume that if you were separated or getting a divorce that you wouldn't want to have any physical intimacy and she did have that rendezvous with Gifford so I would say it's safe to assume that, that he's the father. Norma Jean Baker and she had a rough childhood you know her mom in fact was dealing with mental illness and um, I'm not gonna get too much into it if you really want to hear that story there are plenty of videos um, on her childhood but for the most part her mom had mental had mental issues and ended up putting her in foster homes and she stayed with family and she just she had a really rough childhood and on June 19th 1942 at the age of 16 she ended up getting married to a man named James Daughtry that marriage didn't last very long and, and they ended up divorcing pretty quick after the marriage now Norma Jean Marilyn Monroe, whatever you want to call her, always dreamed of meeting her dad and always wondered about her dad. And one day when she was younger, I guess she was still living with her mom at this point, and there was a picture of a man and she asked who that was and her mom said that that was her father. And she realized that she looked a little more like him than she did Mortensen. So at this point, Marilyn is kind of doing what she's doing. Her mom is dealing with mental illness. She's kind of doing what she's doing. So at this point, there's not really any info on Charles Gifford. We know that he ended up remarrying um, and had more children. So at this point, Stanley Gifford is, you know, hanging out in Hollywood. He's married. He has more kids. He opens up the Los Angeles Times newspaper, and he sees that there is an ad in there for a five-acre plot of land in Hemet, California. And I guess it came with a seven bedroom house and it had like 118 apricot trees. So he went down to Hemet, looked at the property and decided that he wanted it. So in July of 1950, he ended up purchasing the property for an undisclosed amount, but he did bargain and he ended up negotiating the price of $8,500, which to me is insane to think that he was able to get a seven bedroom home for $8,500. Imagine that. Imagine just being able to have $8,500 walking up and buying a seven room home. That's insane. But it was 1950. What do you want? So he originally opened, or, so he originally moved there with a thousand chickens and he had Rhode Island red chickens and, and he had Plymouth rock chickens. He had 20 cows and cows and eventually he had 115 cows. So that's when he decided to turn his property into an actual dairy and he named it red rock dairy due to the rhode island red chickens and the plymouth rock chickens his wife mary was um noted saying that they had convinced five people to try their milk and eventually their business grew and they were able to get three routes in him at california to deliver milk now interesting little story side story i should say is I when we had moved into my dad's house where he still lives there was a doorbell on the back and I had no idea why there was a doorbell on the back door and one day it came up in conversation when I was talking to Betty and she told me she was like oh are the people who owned the house they had um they actually put the doorbell in just so that they could get the red rock delivery of milk every day so I thought that was really really cool 
They've expanded even more and they were able to have a storefront where they sold baked goods and um, ice cream and they even had a monkey called Miss American Red Rock and I guess she was a little monkey and all of the kids would run up and talk to her and kind of you know check her out while they were doing that. He was even able to open up a drive through window so no one had to get out of their car to be able to buy things. He, they would just be able to sit there and have them delivered. So in 1951, Marilyn found out that he was living in Hemet, California, and in a span of two weeks, she ended up coming to see her dad. The first time she came, she went with a friend named Sydney Skolowski, and then the second time, she went with Natasha Lattes. Both times, he ignored her, and some people say that she had went up to the door other people said she was too scared to go up to the door um some people even say that she was staying at the diner across the street waiting to see him and of course you know all the old folk had that conversation and i would overhear that when i was younger about her just sitting there and i guess even betty said that there was times when she would come into town but by the time everybody was aware and started showing up to see if they could get her autograph she had snuck out of, of the back entrance. So in 1961 she returned and she went with Ralph Roberts and then went back a second time with Nat Pat Newcomb. All these times apparently he just denied her. He said I don't want to talk to you. He would close the door in her face. So Marilyn being who she was got a little bit clever and so she had her chauffeur in the limo go through the drive through of the dairy and talk to him that way and he still denied her. Um, at this point we're at this point Marilyn was you know not not doing well. If you follow the whole story of Marilyn Monroe she was dealing with a lot of drugs, she was dealing with alcohol, she was kind of associated with the Kennedys at that point and you know she just wasn't doing well. So that year in 1961 she was committed into the hospital and Stanley was also in the hospital and he had suffered a heart attack. So I guess he calls her and she more or less told him it's too late. You had your chance, it's too late. Sorry. And she hung up on him. On August 5th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe was found dead in her hotel room. And unfortunately, her father only outlived her by a couple years, buried across the street in the San Jacinto Cemetery, along with his wife years later, who was buried next to him. Now, later it came out that the reason he denied Marilyn all those years is, is because he didn't want to shame his current wife and his current family by letting them know that he had an illegitimate child. Um, so that's why he more or less turned her down all those times and denied her any contact with him. L rumor has it that there's proof that he was her father because he has birth records and a birth certificate that has his name on it, but to me that doesn't make sense because if Marilyn Monroe herself had a birth certificate that had Mortensen's name on it, I don't know why he would have a different copy of it with his name on it. So I think that was a rumor. So if you're sitting here wondering, where in the world were these locations in Hemet? I I think I've tracked them down due to old pictures and looking at building, like building dates. At first I thought that the diner that she had hung out at was across the street in the farmer's corner, but I want to say that was built in like 1980. So my thought process is that she, the diner that they were talking about her sitting at and thinking about him was actually DJ's diner on San Jacinto Street. And then if you're wanting to know where her dad's original property was and where the dairy was, that is now Al Cabuto's tractor. So if you're going on San Jacinto Street towards Hemet, you have the farmer's corner, you have the cemetery on the other side, and then right across the street from the cemetery is that little tractor place. Now, I remember when I was younger, we used to go into that place because they had like a discount store, and it looked like it used to be a house, and it looked like it had separate rooms. So that's my assumption. And it just, it would make sense how if he was buried across the street at the cemetery, and then she stayed at a diner, you know, over at, down the street that I think that's a pretty logical way of looking at it. I, you can also let me know what you think 
you know with the pictures that I'm posting during this video let me know if you think that's what where it was if not if you have if you have a more concrete place please let me know I'm so intrigued like put comments I want to talk to you guys I want to talk to anybody who has any thoughts on this it's just so intriguing and I think it's amazing how you know something like that happened in such a small town yes it's tragic but it's interesting um anyways I think that's gonna be it for today um Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through. I think it's interesting. I did a lot of research trying to kind of put things together in chronological order for you guys. So I'm really sorry if it's not the best. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and give this video a like. Please subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye.